Hello again YouTube. Once again trying to slow the smart meter this time with a wind turbine. I just ordered it from Mountain Wind even though it came from Missouri Wind so they must be a sister company or something but I have the 11 blade comes with a rectifier a PMG that's the 12 volt down here I also have the dual PMG uh, I'm gonna this one's rated for I think it's 1600 volts or watts max this one's 2000 max so that means it would be a thousand each side if you're running 12 and they seem to be the same size the wire and everything so I'm not sure why this one is rated 600 watts more but we'll test them together find out which is actually a little bit better um, now all the information on YouTube or anywhere that I can find everybody is using the DC stuff they're charging batteries and you know running their power that way well I want to get away from the battery bank and just go straight from the wild AC stay with AC instead of converting into DC uh, and straight into the house that seems to be the most efficient way to do it um, a question is though this is rated 12 volts DC but it comes out wild AC well so which which AC inverter do you use this one's rated for 10.8 volts to 30 but they also make one that's 22 to 60 well if you check a battery of course it's going to say 12 volts 12.4 if you switch your setting over to AC and you check it now it says 26 volts well that's AC so I am unclear as to which grid tie I should use should I use this one or the one that's 22 to 60 volts well we're gonna have to uh, test that and find out and I'll be recording everything on my kilowatt meter and as long as we're doing this I'm gonna get some RPM readings well, I got her hooked up to my lathe and there's certain speeds it'll do and the difference in the pulleys is almost two to one so I put a piece of that reflective tape and I used my tachometer to see what kind of RPMs we're getting and the four RPM ratings that we're going to be checking is 174 through 540 RPMs I wish I had some uh, more rounder numbers like 100, 200, 300 but I just don't have the correct pulley size for that anyway I'm going to be cutting this video up to make it a uh, lot shorter for you guys to view and we're going to get started with the testing oh by the way on the dump load it's going to be DC on both of them they're not marked which one's positive and which one's negative I don't have a a resistor or anything like that for the dump load but I do have a, a starter and I checked it on a battery both ways it does work so in case I engage the dump load um, I should be hearing that starter going and hopefully nothing gets burnt out because these are about hundred and fifty bucks a piece it's only 500 watts rated for uh, that's supposed to put out a whole lot more so I'm not going to be going into the thousand RPMs as a matter of fact if we start getting close I might even cut it at 455 RPMs and not test any further but in the future I'd also like to test the 24 volt setups I mean I can do it the DC 24 volts with this one but I'm not sure I can do the AC one uh, Wait, you know what? Um, I might have an inverter that can handle that. We'll have to see. Okay, I have this thing all hooked up here and ready to go. 
just for having it plugged in not running it's drawing 1.2 watts and 0 0.01 amps okay let's start this thing up she's gonna be going at 174 rpms okay watts we're still at 1.2 watts so it's probably not doing anything okay she's spinning kind of slow Oh, 175 RPMs. All right. Let's shut her off. Change her to the next speed. Start her up again. Now she's doing 327 RPMs. And now we're starting to see some power. We got about now 11. 11 watts at 0 0.2, uh, 0.22 amps we'll call it. All right. Now let's go to the next speed, which is going to be 455 RPMs. Let's. All right. pre-check pre these so it must be the resistance because it's under load now we're going to try 540 rpms and that one is high come on and 250 All right, let's start her up now and see what happens. I'm having a tough time turning it. So now we're at 33 watts, 28 watts. Jumping back and forth, I hear it squeaking a little. Let's see how many RPMs we're at. Shut her down. Okay, that's what we got. I'll record these all on paper later so you can look at them. Um, I'm also gonna I'm gonna do a test and see what's actually coming out of here, but I can't do it with uh, with all both my hands. Okay, now we're testing it. 70 RPMs, we're getting 20 watts, and I'll show you what's coming out of these prongs here. Let's see if I can do that. I'm going to try and hold the camera with one hand. Okay, each leg is giving us about 10 to 11 volts AC.
see if anything's coming out of the uh, hole. And I have my ground stuck in a the ground to the, the hose. See if we can test this DC output, see if there's any leakage coming out of here. Switch them around. Okay, so the dump load's not engaged, which is good. Now just to show you how much of a strain this is putting on my lathe, I got back there, there is a one and a half horse motor on it. Alright, this is set up to do 455 RPMs right now. Um, under a load it was only doing like 370. We'll start her up. She's under no load. Free spinning. And you'll see she is in fact doing about 450 something RPMs. When I hook her up under a load she's only doing 370 so I'm going to have to adjust my charts. I'll just give you a real quick rundown on the DC input setup. Um, I'm going to set it at the third highest speed, which will turn it on real quick. And you can see what the ratings are. jumps around from 320 to 350. Um, checking these terminals. Okay. Showing. Oh, I'm on our tight. It jumps around a little bit too between 12 and 17. Jump around from 18 to 19 amps. Amps are the highest uh, compared to the AC input one. Uh, let me turn this thing off. On the fastest setting, this thing squeals like a pig. But, um, you know, the stress that this thing is causing, it's really slowing my. Uh, lathe down. I just hope uh, the wind has got a lot more balls than my lathe does. Um, but here are the results of the test. I'll hold it still so you can actually pause it.